Welcome to the last and final video for the PLE this year. This is going to be 4.1.2. So what we're going to be talking about here is projectile motion. So this is going to be something that if you are taking physics, AP physics, or regular physics, you've probably already covered this or will be covering this very shortly. So we're not going to spend a lot of time in this, but we're just going to go into it. So let's start off with first we got to learn some words. Speed is the distance something travels over its unit time. Velocity, which is very used synonymously, is a object speed and direction. So it has a direction. If you remember back when we talked about vectors versus scalars, velocity is a vector while speed is a scalar. So direction is important when we talk about velocity. Acceleration is when we change that velocity, speed up or slow down. So gravity tends to pull all objects to the, cer at the center of the Earth. Now, the gravitational acceleration is always constant, no matter what object it is. And in the Earth, it's always pointing down, hence the negative sign. And it's always doing at 9.8 meters per second squared for the metric system, or 32 feet per second in the English Standard System. So... Let's look if somebody jumps off an airplane, goes skydiving, how far would you go? Now we're going to be using English units because we're in, in engineers. So after your first second, you'll travel 32 seconds. But then after your second second, you're going to go an additional 32, so total 64. Then you're going to be going 96. Again, you notice how it's going to be, it's going to go as an exponential. Then 128, then 160, then 192. So you're going to exponentially get faster and faster as you follow closer and closer. And again, that's assuming no air friction. So, a human cannonball. Human cannonballs, we can think of it as a cannon or any projectile, is any object that's moving with just the use of gravity. So we're shooting it, and as soon as it leaves the barrel, there's no other force acting upon it other than gravity. So, we're going to look at the angle because that's going to be important and our initial velocity and that's the only things that we know and if we know those two things we can predict where it will land now if you shoot it straight up where the angle is 90 degrees then it will shoot up fly up come back down half the time up and half the time down that's a very easy math problem if you shoot it horizontally then you can actually it will just it's going to bend and a nice little parabola. The bend, the pulling down of gravity is slowly pulling it down faster and faster. Now, if you're calculating it based on any angle, somewhere between straight up or horizontal, then you have to use the range equation, which is the square root of minus gx all over sine, sine of the two times the theta, which is your equals your initial velocity. So if you re rearrange that equation, your distance, or your range, will equal to the velocity is squared times the sine of double your angle all over your gravity. So, then if you want to know what the angle is, again, you're just rearranging the same equation. 2 times the angle is equal to the inverse sine, or the, uh, inverse, cosine, the inverse sine of g times your range divided by v squared. So, those are it. Those are the, your calculations. And that's all you need to know for this unit is those three equations. So write those down and we will then go and have you guys do some fun shooting of cannons at the classroom. If you have any questions, please ask your teacher.